Hello, my name is Sam. I'm a software engineer on the Scriptrunner team at Adaptivist. And today, really excited to show you our new rich text scripted fields. And these enable users to output HTML uh, to the screen. So here's one I created earlier. And you can see we're outputting a HTML table containing various data. So firstly, the issue key and ID, which we've created into a link, which will take users to the issue itself. Uh, the issue summary, uh, whether it's assigned to anyone or not, and if so, who, the issue status, and by using the power of scripted fields, we can calculate uh, how long that issue has been in that status. So today we're going to show you how to create this. So if we navigate over to our scripted field, first I've given it a name, I've enabled it, which means that it will be shown within any relevant issues. Uh, I positioned it within the issue content rather than the sidebar. I wanted to apply to this particular project and to every issue type within that project. And then when we get to field type, you'll notice that we have uh, a fifth option now, which is rich text field. And that's what you'll need to select uh, if you want to output any HTML. So moving on to the code, first thing I'm doing is I want to retrieve all of the issues of type bug for my instance. So to do that, I'm making a get request to the Jira search API, and I'm providing a JQL query of issue type equals bug. From that response, I'm then extracting the issues themselves. So at this point, we've got a list of every issue of type bug in my instance. Uh, and then for our particular use case, I want to output a different table row for each issue. And that table row will contain uh, all of the data relevant to that issue. So that's what we need to do next. Firstly, we iterate through the issues and then we're extracting the different data we want. So ID, summary, status change date, key, assignee, and status. Uh, you'll notice with assignee and status, we've got this syntax here, which is called an Elvis operator. And essentially it's a shorthand ternary. So if there is a display name, we want to use that. Otherwise we're going to use this value on the right. So unassigned. Similarly for status, if there is a status, if the status category has a name, we want to use that. Otherwise the status is unknown. The next thing we want to do is to calculate uh, the time it's been in that status. So we can use the uh, time category class, and then we essentially want to compare two dates. So the status change date um, and now, and see how long has elapsed uh, between the two. So that's what this line is doing here. And then this will uh, be an object. So to create a more user-friendly, um, output, we're going to create a string. So we're creating that here, and then we're just checking if uh, there have been one or more days since uh, the ticket status was last changed. If so, we're going to concatenate uh, this part onto the string, and so on and so forth, depending on how long has elapsed. And we'll end up with something which looks like this. So days, hours, minutes, or if there haven't if it's only been minutes um, since the last status change, then we'll simply show that instead. Perfect. So at this point, we've got the data we want. We just need a way of creating a table row. So what we need to do is create uh, some ADF. And ADF stands for Atlassian Document Format. And it's a JSON-like structure, um, which we're going to be using to output some HTML. So Atlassian provide us with this ADF builder. And within here, you'll see all the various options, headings, lists, and so on. Uh, but we're concerned with tables today. So if I click table, you'll see that uh, this table appears. We can give it different values. Like so. And then within the cells themselves, we can uh, use any HTML really. So we could provide headings, lists. Uh, so if we just do some simple text 
And then we can also do links, which is really useful. So if I link to www.adaptivist.com, you can see we get this link generated here. And then below, uh, the ADF builder will generate the ADF representation of what we see here. So you'll see we have some content type table. The table itself has different rows. This first row has table headers. And then later rows will have table cells. So thinking back to our use case, we want a different row for every issue. And that's what we're doing here. So I've simply copied and pasted one of the table rows containing cells uh, into here. And then we are interpolating the values we've extracted up here uh, to populate the data within those cells. So for instance, this first row, sorry, this first column, uh, which is this one. So issue key, issue ID. Uh, we've created a link, the text of which is key slash ID, and then the href, i.e. where the link takes us, is our base URL slash browse slash key, which is what is shown here. So when users click one of these links, it will take them to the relevant issue. Uh, moving on, we're simply uh, outputting the summary as text. Uh, we're italicizing it, also similarly with assignee and status. And then when we get to the final column, which is our time and status, we're using that uh, nicely formatted string we created earlier. So at this point, we've got a list of all of the different table rows um, in an ADF format. So one row per issue. And the next thing we need to do is output the actual table itself. So if we scroll down, you can see that here we've got a content type table, and then we've got the first row. So the row containing the headers. If we scroll down further after that first row, that's when we're going to introduce uh, the rows we've created. So the cells, the rows of cells, um, and we're essentially just um, joining them into a long string separated by a comma. So each row will be uh, interpolated into here um, and will be output to the user. So it's important to know uh, ADF is a JSON-like structure which uses uh, curly braces, whereas uh, in Groovy, which is what we need our code within our scripted fields to be, uh, both objects and arrays utilize square brackets. So to avoid users having to transform uh, the ADF into something more Groovy friendly, we can use this line of code here. So new groovy.json.json slurper.pass text. We can then provide a triple double quoted string and simply copy and paste our ADF uh, within it like so. So if we now go down and test our code, we should see our HTML table pop up. And there we have it. We've got all of the data we've extracted, uh, a link to each relevant issue, and then the time um, that issue has been in that status. If we then click on one of these, it will take us to the issue and we'll see it within the issue content. Like so. So that's the end of this example. Uh, thank you very much. And really excited to see uh, what you guys do with this new rich text scripted fields. Um, thank you.